Thank you, BT1. Thank you, BT9. Recordings are running, Peter. Can we get on the floor, Keith? Run the clock. Gentlemen, not to worry about shots 27 to 34, the drop of a light, and I have plenty of time to tell you about that on TK. Okay? 10, 9, Some TK. 8, 7, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. On film, 2 next. Here's a house. Here's a door. Windows, one, two, three, coming four. to two. Ready to knock. Turn Start your knock. track, two, and we mix. Please. Shot one, four next. This machine is making a sound and vision recording of the children's program you've just been watching. Videotape recording is a method of storing pictures and sound signals from television cameras in such a way that they can be reviewed immediately, alterations can be made to both picture and sound, and subsequently the program can be transmitted at any given time. Videotape recording uses in principle the same methods as an ordinary sound tape recorder, which puts an electronic signal onto a piece of oxide coated tape, passing at a given speed over a recording head. In appearance, the VTR machine looks like a vast sound tape recorder. The tape it uses is much wider, two inches in fact. And it runs through the machine at about 15 inches every second. These spools can take up to 90 minutes of recording before reloading. When the VTR machine is in the record position, the master erase head wipes all unwanted signals from the tape before it comes in contact with the recording heads. The tape next comes in contact with the vision recording head. But it's physically impracticable to incorporate two highly sensitive devices in the same place. So the simultaneous sound recording head has to be placed away from the vision head assembly. The vision recording and replay head itself consists of a small wheel on which the four vision heads are mounted. In order that the tape will be accurately positioned in relation to these heads, a small suction device bows the tape so that the rotating head wheel is always tightly in contact with it. The vision signal is placed on the tape not as a continuous horizontal band but as a series of nearly vertical stripes. As the tape passes horizontally through the machine at about 15 inches every second, the wheel rotates at a very high speed. Besides carrying the vision signal, the tape has three other tracks. The sound track, which is recorded horizontally along the top of the tape, and the cue and control tracks at the bottom. This control track is equivalent to the perforations on a cine film and ensures that the recording runs at the correct speed on playback. Incorporated in this signal is a large pulse mark known as the edit pulse. There is an edit pulse recorded at the start of each picture, and this is the mark which the editor requires to cut and join the tape correctly. Incidentally, none of these signals or tracks are visible to the naked eye until they are treated with a special solution by the videotape editor. To go over these points again, the master erase head first clears the tape of all unwanted signals. The video head assembly incorporates the suction device which holds the tape in position and the control track head which governs the speed and alignment of the tape. The simultaneous sound recording head. The sound and vision heads are some inches apart. This means that although the sound is recorded and played back simultaneously, its position on the tape is in advance of its corresponding picture. This displacement between the sound and vision signals is nine and a half inches, which produces on the tape a separation of about 0.6 of a second. If the continuous output from a studio is recorded without any adjustments, the tape can be transmitted as soon as required.
But there are occasions when a director will want to alter a part of his programme, either to join one sequence to another, to shorten it, or to replace one scene by another. This he can do by editing the tape in a number of different ways. The simplest way of making an editing point without involving ourselves in the sound and vision displacement problem would be to make a cut where both vision and sound fade to black and silence. If we join this scene to another where the reverse happened, a sound and vision fade in, it would be possible to make the actual join clear of all signals and there would then be no indication that the sections had been joined. If there were a similar sound from one scene to another, an edit could be made in a similar way. Such a join made between a fade-out, fade-in would appear like this in an actual programme. We in fact control search and rescue operations along the whole length of the English Channel. The first thing, obviously, is to get the attention of someone ashore or, or, or on a nearby... And attention of someone ashore or, or, or on a nearby... And yes, well, that well, seems to be about it, doesn't it? This is a very simple form of edit, and a good way of joining one sequence to another. If a cut has to be made in the middle of a sequence, however, then a rather more complicated method must be used, employing the dubbing of sound. Consider one piece of vision and its accompanying soundtrack. If the tape is cut at the vision head position, then the next vision signal to come in contact with the head will be on the left, while the corresponding piece of sound will be nine and a half inches to the right. We'll join a different scene on the left and now look at the result of such a cut between two different sequences. Well, he's got a clear pavement with no pedestrians or only one perhaps just there, but he's got some solid wall just beyond there which he could try. The car that you and I drive is compelled by law to have a certain standard of braking. This is laid down in the regulations for the annual test. Let's look at it again. Note the join between the two scenes. That's just there, but he's got some solid wall just beyond there which he could try. The car that you and I drive is... The overlap in the soundtrack between the pictures is due to the fact that the sound has been cut at exactly the same point as the picture. As the cut in the tape passes the vision head, the sound being played is still that belonging to the previous picture. With a straight cut from one scene to another, there must be some way of ensuring that the sound cut can be made in advance of the vision cut, so it is heard in synchronization with the picture change. In this sequence, we have two tapes, containing scene A and scene B, which are to be joined together. The cuts are to be made at X and Y, and the two sections joined together. In order that the cut is to be seen and heard correctly, the sound from the beginning of scene B must be transferred by the use of a sound tape recorder to the end of scene A. When this is done, the section runs through the machine with the sound and vision changing simultaneously in the correct way. Just beyond there, which he could try. The private car that you and I drive is compelled by law to have a certain standard... To go over these points again. The sound signal on the tape is nine and a half inches ahead of its corresponding picture signal, that is, 0.6 of a second in time. If two sections of tape are joined together, then the sound belonging to the start of scene B will be cut off. This is avoided by transferring this sound section to the end of scene A by the use of a sound tape recorder. Having to dub the sound forward over the outgoing scene with the use of a sound tape recorder is a complicated and time-consuming process. A more satisfactory and efficient way of coping with the sound advance problem is to ensure that the overlap is prepared beforehand in the studio. This sequence shows the sound and vision signals of three consecutive shots. If we wish to replace shot 39 with a retake, it means cutting at X and Y. If we made a straight cut through the tape at these points, we would lose part of the sound of shots 39 and 40. However, if we recorded in the studio the sound of shots 38, 39 and 40, but only the vision of shot 39 held for the length of all three shots, this would enable us to make our cuts at X and Y, replay shot 39, and at the same time be sure that the sound position is correct. 
This method could be used to improve this sequence, which didn't satisfy the director during his recording. Which I think you'll see better if I take this cloak off. Hmm. It's uh, tied with a cord that's got a bit caught up around a button or something. Hmm. Oh dear. There. The director decided to retake the close-up at the end of his recording, and he went about it in this way. Right, gentlemen, there is a retake, and I, I think probably Keith, you'll oh, guess which one it is. Yeah. Um, in fact, if Sir Walter Raleigh had taken that much long to take his cape off to put in the puddle for Queen Elizabeth, she'd about to be a knees yeah. in water by the time he'd got it off. <laughs> he knows which one it is. Uh, four, it's, sh what shot is it? Uh, 39. It's shot 39, the close shot on four, please, Brian. Yeah. And I shall need the sound from 38 yeah, and 40. Yeah. Yeah. Recording's all right, Warwick. Recording's running, please. Yeah. Okay, then stand by, Keith. Ident it, please. Ident. Q him. There's another large ruff round my neck. If I take this cape off, I think you'll see it more easily. better now. It's made of the same material as the ruffs on my cuff and it makes me keep my chin up. Okay, that's so enough. Fine. Thank system. you. That's all I need for the edit. Okay. Thank you very much. We're going to start the recording there. Thank him very much indeed and relax him, please. After the recording, the original shot 39 was replaced by the retake shot and the result was viewed. There's braid and gold buttons all the way down the front. There's a cloak to cover it. There's another, another ruff as well around my neck which I think you'll see better if I take this cloak off. See? Made of the same material as the ruffs on the cuffs. Up to this point, we've examined the way in which videotape works, and if edits have to be made, how they can be done by physically cutting the tape, having, if possible, prepared a sound overlap first. We'll now see how the editor actually makes this join. Having cut through the tape approximately at the editing point, he unlaces it from the machine and paints it with the magnetic developer. This doesn't show him the picture content, which can only be seen by running the tape through the videotape machine at normal speed. But under the microscope, it does reveal the vision recording track and the position of the edit pulse. The editor adjusts the videotape in the editing block for his exact edit point and clamps the tape in the correct position cutting off any excess tape with the guillotine. In the same way, the editing point is found on the incoming piece of tape. The excess tape is cut off with the guillotine. By lifting the tape ends, the adhesive splicing tape is positioned beneath them. They are then pressed firmly onto this with a swab stick. The trimming block is placed on the videotape and the surplus splicing tape cut off. After the tape is unclamped and lifted out of the editing block, the join is complete. A more immediate way of making edits to a recording would be by carrying them out in the studio at the time the recording was being made. This can be done by an electronic device which is part of the videotape machine and is linked to the studio by a remote control. In fact, the machine itself makes the edit by changing from the playback to the record function at a predetermined point. This is done by the director pressing a button in the studio gallery. What happens is that a signal is recorded onto the cue track of the tape at the point at which the edit is to be made. There is no physical cutting of the tape involved and the machine makes the necessary compensation for the sound displacement. When the tape is rerun, the machine will switch at this point from playback to record. However, in order that the position of the cue signal is exact, this changeover can be rehearsed on the studio monitors and altered if necessary. This method of editing allows the director to deal with planned or even unplanned breaks. In the recording of this program, a break has been planned to allow a costume change to be made, so that the girl will appear to have changed instantaneously from one dress to another. I know. I'll put them on by magic. You say abracadabra. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. 
and turn round one. Right. Cut. Abra. Forty-eight. Abra. And that's the point we edit. Okay. Stop the recording. Okay, Keith, on the floor, will you get Julie into a costume as quickly as possible, please? Uh, Mark Brown, where he is, stay where he is. All cameras stay exactly where they are. And we'll rewind, please, VT, to shot 47. While the editor rewinds the tape, the girl makes her costume change. When she is ready, the tape will be rerun, showing the previous scene. At the point of the predetermined changeover, the director will cue the studio action, and from the electronic cue already recorded, the videotape machine will monitor the change from tape playback to studio output. There is available an advanced cue signal from the videotape machine, relayed to the gallery and floor manager 1.2 seconds before the edit point occurs, and this allows the performers to take up their cue. Right studio, VT has one back now, and we've got a 20 second playback. <coughs> Julie's ready and organised to go on, on her marks. Yes, Keith? Yeah. Okay, run VT. Right. VT is there. running. Oh, right. You will take the cue I'm from the match. cue pulse. 15 seconds. Abracadabra. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes and turn round once. Right. Abra. Cadabra. There. Oh, I wish I'd used magic to put mine on. <laughs> They're rather splendid, aren't they? Finally, this is how that sequence looked. You better hurry up. These clothes take a long time to put on, you know. Oh, all right, I know. I'll put them on by magic. You say abracadabra, mm -hmm. close your eyes, and turn round once. Right. Abra cadabra. Well, I wish I'd used magic to put mine on. If there are a large number of known edits to be carried out before a programme can be completed, it would be more practicable, and also save studio time, to have these carried out afterwards. This does, however, involve the use of two machines or possibly more if the program is very complicated. And this method normally means the making of second generation tape. One of the most usual examples is the assembly editing of a program that has been shot in a number of separate sequences. The original recording is transferred to another tape, which is to be our transmission copy, up to the point where the first edit is to be made. As in the studio, the Q button is pressed at this moment. Amber and white. The editor playing the original tape finds the editing point and the scene to be transferred next. Then both machines are spooled back about 20 seconds. They will then be started simultaneously and the point at which the edit will be made can be rehearsed until it's satisfactory. Okay, Ron, we'll do a rehearsal. This film has dealt with the basic properties of videotape recording. If a program has to be edited, there are certain difficulties to be considered, and it must be decided which method will deal with them most effectively. The simplest way is to make the edit where picture and sound fade to black. If this can't be done, a direct cut gives rise to certain technical problems which can be overcome by transferring the sound by the use of a sound tape recorder. Depending on the type of edit that has to be made, it may be better to prepare a retake in the gallery with overlapping sound. But all these methods will involve the physical cutting and joining of the tape by a videotape editor. Electronic editing can be carried out after the program recording is over on two or more videotape machines, although this may involve the making of a second generation tape. The electronic method carried out in the gallery is the most immediate way of making an edit. This method can also cope with unexpected faults that may develop, and these can be corrected at the time. Breaks can be planned, 
and editing becomes part of the production procedure. Well, it's time for us to say goodbye now. Okay. We'll be back Run TK. Goodbye until then. Goodbye, in eight, seven, six, on five, four, three, two, and one. I'm through. And through. Also, three next. Going to three. Through to three. Two next. Through to two. Fade to black. And stop the recording. Thank you. Right. Oh, right. Apart from the uh, the right. being twice as large. Oh, as briefly, can you stop recording, please? Give me clear on that, oh, if you would. That's the whole program. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Call me back, William. Thank you. Well, that was all right. What's yeah. the timing? Twenty-four thirty-two. Is there any other retakes, Peter? Uh, no, there'll be no retakes.